Hi, welcome to the Julie Rose Show. Today's Tuesday, December 19th, 2017. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to welcome, um, welcome Eric to the line. Eric, Thanks. hi. Thanks, Julie. Great to be here. Thank you so much again for your help on all these podcasts. Um, so before we get to where we introduce this next topic, I wanted to just address um, a couple of things. We did Podcast 49 last weekend and released it just for a couple of days. I want to let people know a little bit about why we decided to take that down. Um, first of all, we were prompted by the Spirit to take it down. And that came after, um, well, well I, I can't speak for you, Eric. Maybe you can share some of your thoughts on it in a minute. But um, my thoughts are this. We released it, uh, well, we thought we were releasing it Friday morning, but it went out Thursday night late, right, Eric? Is that right? Yeah, exactly, right. Yeah, and somehow something happened. It got rented a little bit early, which was fine, no big deal. And then, um, then by the middle of night Saturday well Saturday afternoon the sort started working me on me on some things and I asked if we should take it down uh, well I was told we should take it down but I didn't have clarity on it and I asked if I should take it down and talk to Eric that day and the sort said no just wait for a little bit just wait for a little bit and then um, I was awakened at 4.30 in the morning on Saturday night, so going into Sunday morning, and there was a text conversation with Eric, and he had, well, I don't want to speak for you, Eric, but I think you shared with me that someone from the other side woke you up at about 3 o'clock your time. Yeah, right. Yeah, so 4 o'clock my time. So they woke me up about a half hour after they woke Eric up, and it was decided that the best thing we needed to do was go ahead and take it down. So. Um, I'm not going to go into any more detail than that, just to let you know that um, the impression I had and the visions I was given going forward were that um, there were some people that had misconstrued or would misconstrue the things that I had shared, and that it would not end well for me or Eric if we kept the podcast up, because people with evil intent in their heart uh, were going to try and cause some havoc for us. And um, I do not take back anything that I said on that podcast. I stand by my words. I spoke nothing but truth and my understanding and my memories that I have from the Book of Life. I want to make it very clear that I stand by what I shared. However, based on the emails that came in, many people were touched a great deal by those words that I spoke. And there were some that had some concerns. To you, I say... If you have concerns, I'll tell you the same thing I've said any other time, and that is, if you think you heard me say something, take it to the Lord and ask him if that's what I actually said. And if I did say that, he'll tell you. And if I said something that's of concern to you, take that to the Lord, and he'll tell you and explain it to you if you're ready to hear that, or if you have pure intent and a great desire to know truth. If I said something that's upsetting to you, I will not apologize for that, I spoke truth as I know it and as I understand, and perhaps you misunderstood what I said. Having said that, my heart goes out to those who are having confusion or difficulty at this time, understanding the words that they think they heard me say. And to you again I say, go to the Lord with your concerns, and he will answer upon your heart what you need to know at this time. Having said that, I did promise those in the last episode, in the last podcast, that I would be sharing more from my book of life. I will tell you that where I am emotionally today, based on how I've been treated in the last three days, uh, I'm not really feeling like I want to share anything. I have a heart too, you guys. And mine is hurting a great deal right now. But in obedience to the Spirit prompting me, Eric and I are going to go forward with this podcast, replacing Podcast 49 with this one, in the spirit of Christmas, I hope that you'll bear with me. Julie, do you mind if I chime in and just say a few remarks before you move on to that topic? Yeah. Yes, please do, Eric. I just wanted to add my witness that there was absolutely no question that we were meant to do that podcast, that the doctrines contained in that podcast are true, and that more will be discussed on that at a future time. Um, 
I also have no doubt that the Spirit told us to take that podcast down, which is interesting, which tells me there was purpose in it. Um, I, For what it's worth, I just want listeners to know we love you, and um, truth is, an, is a precarious and special and sensitive topic, and everybody on this planet is at different stages in their eternal progression, and we understand that. And so in an upcoming podcast, very likely the next one, I'd like to more specifically not address the exact doctrines of the last podcast, but discuss truth and some historical patterns of truth, how it comes to us and how it's hard for some to receive. And I think it will be a very uplifting and enlightening discussion, and I hope you guys will all tune into that. Eric, thank you. You guys notice how Eric has this way of calming me down? <laughs> I get all riled up. I'm a very passionate person. I have high energy most of the time. I, I'm i extremely emotional. And Eric has this way of just calming things down. And I just wanted to thank you for your words, Eric. Thanks, Julie. You you have a way of saying things the way I can't say them. I, I have a way of offending people. You have a way <laughs> of endearing people to you. So I, I just wanted to thank you for that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That's a very fine compliment. I appreciate it. <laughs> so anyway, I hope people will be patient with me. I do speak from the heart, you guys. And so with that, you get what Eric calls my raw emotion. <laughs> <laughs> he is used to my raw emotion because he spent hours and hours interviewing me for the biography and, and doing these podcasts. And and he, uh, he knows that when my heart gets hurt, sometimes I... Um, I withdraw. That's my tendency. I want to withdraw. I want to keep things to myself. I want to say that I will not share anymore, that I can't do this mission, that I'm finished, I'm tired, but I love my Lord. I love Christ. I love the gospel. I love my Father in Heaven. And I made a commitment I made a commitment to many of my brothers and sisters, and I made a commitment to my God, and I s intend to fulfill that commitment. And so in that spirit, um, if you feel the heaviness in my heart, maybe that's for a purpose. Um, I am not one to hide my feelings, which is why when I get hurt, I want to withdraw, because I don't, I don't like to uh, put negative feelings on anyone else. But I hope that all those with the sound of my voice will hear that when I know something, I will say it. And I hope you hear me very clearly on this. When the opposition on both sides of the veil becomes so intense after I have done a podcast, all that does is compel me to go forward. So for those of you that have a problem with that or that have decided to try to bully me into shutting me up again, I say to you, it's not working. Um... Anyway, I want to switch the energy up a bit because this is supposed to be a podcast that's uplifting for Christmas. That's what we have planned today. But in all honesty, Eric, you know that Christmas is a hard time for me. Um, I know. Right? We've talked so, about this. It is for me as well. So it's kind of ironic yeah. that here we are trying to be the motivators behind this holiday. <laughs> right. So, so, I don't know, Eric, why is Christmas hard for you? Do you want to... Share any of that? Well, sure. I I, I uh, don't know where this will go. I was not planning on this, but... Um, I don't know where this will go either. Let's <laughs> just do it all off the cuff, right? Sounds, Whatever comes up. <laughs> sounds good. I There's some words of Isaiah that have penetrated my heart for a long time. Uh, it, Isaiah often talks about the ways the Gentiles will <clears throat> live their culture and their beliefs in the latter days and how much of it is offensive to God. And for some time holidays have <clears throat> excuse me, holidays have had that effect on me. I I think a lot of the ways we celebrate holidays is is a mockery before God. Um, that is at the heart of why I have a difficulty celebrating Christmas in our Gentile culture. 
um, there's much good about Christmas. And in fact, I was just talking to Julie about this. I love Christmas music. It's um, a lot of it is very inspired and uplifting. It's one of the only things that heals my heart and uplifts my soul. <clears throat> um, in fact, I listen to Christmas music year round because because it has such a high vibration, high energy, and um, a strong pull to heaven. I love Christmas. I also love Christmas food and all the the parties that come with it is is a lot of fun. Um, I I don't know what else to say, Julie. That's kind of it for me. Holidays in general are a little tough. Um, I think there are pure ways to celebrate eternal truths. Um, I just think a lot of the ways of man have crept into the way we celebrate these holidays. Yeah, I agree with you. Thank you for sharing that, Eric. Yeah. So, um, I've tried to understand for years what it is about Christmas. For me, it's like this love-hate pull inside of me, right? On the one hand, I am, like, so touched by the spirit of Christmas that often comes to the hearts of people um, that you don't always feel at other times. I um, center to my emotion is... Um, the thought of the birth of our Savior, which is supposed to be the reason we celebrate Christmas. Right. Um, although his birth was actually April 6th, and I look forward to when we're in New Jerusalem and when we celebrate his birth in April. Um, I... I have images since my near-death experience in 2004. I've had images or memories of what they've shown me from the Book of Life regarding the Savior's birth, and they are sealed in my memory, um, sealed in my heart. And they are so sacred to me and so personal to me because of their sacredness and because of my relationship with Christ and who He is as our brother as our Savior, as our Redeemer, that um, I, I really don't have words to describe what I feel at Christmas because it's as if I'm taken back to that manger scene every time Christmas rolls around since I had my near-death experience. Um, that near the death, death experience was September 28th and 29th of 2004 and I had another one in October and November of that year that we talked about in the biography coming out so the first Christmas of 2000 uh, that after my near death experience in 2004 was a deeply spiritual experience for me and also highly emotional at that point in time um in all honesty, I I didn't want to be on the earth. I wanted to be with my Father in Heaven, and I wanted to be with my Savior. I was really struggling um, because the Christmas season brought with it some emotional pain from childhood and college years and some other experiences I had with extended family. I had a lot of convoluted emotions and I know I'm not alone in this. I hope that in us doing this podcast, Eric, that there are those that are listening within the sound of our voices that will know that the Lord is aware of you during this difficult time. For those of you that have lost loved ones recently, those of you that have loved ones that are struggling either mentally, emotionally, physically, or otherwise, um, I've been contacted by a lot of people uh, and I do energy sessions with people, uh, many who deal with seasonal depression or holiday depression because of traumatic events in childhood or otherwise. For whatever reason, the holidays and especially the Christmas season have a tendency to kind of trigger us um, with some of those emotions. And so I hope, I hope that with this podcast, those of you that are listening will understand that you're not alone, that there are people who love you very, very much, and that maybe just listening to a few of our words today will give you an added measure of hope, maybe some peace, help you know 
that the Lord's aware of you and help get you through a, the next week or so that can be kind of tough. Um, as we enter into New Year coming in, I'd like to do more of a New Year's podcast in the next couple weeks, Eric, and, and we kind of talked a little bit about that. We'll, we'll do a special New Year's podcast as well. Good. Um, do you have anything you want to add to that, Eric? Another thing, uh, you know, I, as you asked me about my feelings on Christmas, another thing that I love about Christmas is the pure aspect of it, and it's, it's Christ and his birth, of course. One of the things I love, and I mentioned music, is Handel's Messiah and uh, the wonderful, inspired Handel who wrote that, <clears throat> that masterpiece. I love the one where he quotes Isaiah and he says, you, you said, Julie, you're trying to find the right words. Some of the right words for me at the Christmas season are wonderful. Christ is wonderful. Uh, he's the counselor, the everlasting father. The, the Prince of Peace. He is my Savior and Redeemer. And his humble beginnings in his life are very touching. It's ironic that those powerful words that were given to us by Isaiah describe an infant born in a stable with animals all around in those humble circumstances I um the world didn't receive him quite with the honor and dignity and grace and reverence and respect and adoration that he truly deserves But it's, it's upon even each of us at this time now to welcome him into our hearts and give him the proper welcoming into our hearts and into our lives and um, as we try to share him and the, the wonderful gift that he is with others. Thank you, Eric. I love that you've quoted Isaiah as well. I love Isaiah. He is a good man. when I've been shown scenes from Isaiah and the life that he lived um, I think it, it, it's amazing to me how the Lord uses those who are willing to serve him to spread his messages of truth no matter how difficult it may be and I just want to publicly thank our Father in Heaven for giving us the opportunity to serve in this capacity. Thank him for the words of Isaiah and for the man that he is, for those prophetic words which were written so many years ago. I know without a shadow of a doubt that we have a Redeemer, that Jesus is the Christ, that there is no other way. There is no other way, you guys. And it's only through him that we can be healed. Um, no matter what our pain is, no matter how deep, those personal pains that only he knows, that not even our spouses know, or our children, or our parents know. I am so eternally thankful for the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ, for the signs in the heavens which were given, that foretold a story that would soon come to pass. We have similar signs in the heavens today, preparing us for the way of our Savior to return. And while none of us know exactly when that will be, I witness and testify to you that that day will come. That there is much we don't understand regarding, regarding the heavens or regarding the earths or regarding the trigger word of probations that everybody's having a hissy fit over. But I testify to you that the doctrine of multiple probations is a true doctrine, and I will not expound upon it and its meaning, because that is not my place. That is for the Lord to teach you. And it is scriptural. Study the discourses given by Brigham Young and Joseph Smith. That's a good starting point for you. I know that God loves you. 
I know that God forgives you when you seek him and you ask for forgiveness and you're willing to come to him in humility. I know this because he does this for me. And if he's going to do it for me, he'll do it for you. I know that he takes our weaknesses and makes them strengths if we allow him to. And I know that if we are willing servants, he will put us to use and work in his kingdom. I know that we have equal opposition in all things, including those on the planet who seek to thwart God's plan. I know that having opposition in all things, there are equal numbers of light and dark on this planet. And having said that, I know that light is light years ahead, eons and eons ahead of the dark forces, and with that, having seen the end from the beginning, God is over all, and he will win the war. I am thankful that no matter how much darkness swirls around me and tries to encompass my very soul, I am thankful that every single time God rescues me, and he lifts me up, and he counsels with me, and he encourages me, and he forgives me, and he helps me be stronger. It is because of the birth of Jesus Christ as our Savior and Redeemer that we can be forgiven, that we can seek forgiveness, we can forgive ourselves, we can be healed, and we can become like our father and our mother. These are eternal truths and principles. I stand and witness to you today, sending love to you wherever you may be. I hope one day that I can have love in my heart that Christ has in his for each of you. I still have a long way to go, but that is my hope and that is my prayer. Having said that, Eric, I don't know that I have a whole lot more to say today. I don't know if you want to wrap it up, if there's anything else you want to share. I don't have anything else, Julie. Just Merry Christmas, everyone. Please keep Christ at the center of your thoughts. Please be loving and um, full of gratitude and service and um, live the lives that <clears throat> that he would want us to live and that he gave the perfect example of. And um, I think this will be a, a more meaningful and wonderful Christmas season for you. Thank you, Eric. Much love to you and your families. Stay tuned. We'll do another podcast next week. The topic of the next one being truth. Thanks, you guys.